So far we've talked about refraction through basically just an object, but it gets to be a little bit more useful when we talk about refraction through lenses. So we have two types of lenses. This one is a convex lens, and this is a concave lens. The good part about this is we don't really have to deal with the index of refraction much anymore. We're just going to say certain things about light coming into this. Now, the way it works on the inside of the lens is that it bends with respect to the normal uh, and then it bends back out. But that's very complicated to do across the whole curved surface. So really what we're going to do, um, I'm going to say this is the plane of the lens right here. We're going to do the axis of the lens rather. They say that something coming in parallel to the axis of the lens is going to go through the focal point. And for a convex lens like this, it all tends to focus at that focal point. Every ray coming in parallel is bent through the focal point. <clears throat> so we call this a converging lens. light tends to be focused at the focal point. A concave lens, on the other hand, is a little bit different. In a concave lens, it still has a focal point, just like the convex lens, but based on its shape, it makes the light spread out. So light coming in parallel is still refracted, but it tends to bend outwards just a little bit. And it bends outwards in such a way that it appears to be coming from a focal point. It's one of those things where your eye can trace it back to the focal point. So again, it gets refracted outwards and appears to be coming from this focal point. I'll draw another one. This is what we call a diverging lens, meaning that the light tends to spread out away from it. So, um, <clears throat> we're going to talk about some basic properties of both of these. Um, the main one being that only through a convex lens can I form a real image but it forms both real and virtual images. A diverging lens, on the other hand, because it doesn't actually focus the light down to where the light rays actually cross, only forms virtual images. Now, for us, real images are going to be inverted, and we're going to look at that in a second. And virtual images are going to be upright. And you'll have an opportunity to play with these lenses in class. What's important for us to remember is that a convex lens is converging, and a concave lens is diverging. All right, right now we're looking at um, an object a thin convex lens and the image that comes through it. So we have a converging lens here. Now as we look at this we're, we're gonna have to note the focal length and, and the object distance just to see where where these things are gonna end up being. So um, as we draw this there are certain rays that are gonna help us with this. They're called the principal rays. And so if we look at this um, we have some general rules. So the first one, the first ray that we can draw, oh, these are going to be hard to do. The first ray that we can draw um, I have a parallel ray and it is refracted through the focal point. That's my focal point. 
The second one is a um, ray passing through the center of the lens. And we see that ray is not refracted. It just passes straight through, no problem. And this is our last one. It's a ray through the focal point. So a ray through F, and it comes out. And by tracing these rays through the lens, we can actually see where an image is formed. And this is a real image because all of these rays pass through it. And we see that it's below the axis of the lens, and so it's inverted. Now, as we move these things around, we get different, different kinds of images. The closer and closer we get to the focal point, the bigger and bigger the object's going to get. As you can see right here, it's magnified a lot. Now, if we move it further and further back, it's going to be smaller and smaller and smaller. It's still a real image, but it's not magnified anymore. And what determines whether we're getting bigger or whether we're getting smaller is whether or not we are inside the radius of the curvature or inside a distance that is um, twice the focal length away from the lens. Once we get outside of that, it gets smaller. Once we get inside of that, it gets bigger. But it's still inverted. If we move it forward of this point, See those green lines? Those green lines are for the virtual image. If we move it forward and follow our same rules, we see this ray that is passing through the focal point and it goes out of the lens parallel. We see that ray going in this direction. This one coming, oops, this one coming in parallel is being refracted through the focal point. And this one moving through the center does not change. Looking at these three, they're never going to meet up on this side of the lens. So they're not going to form a real image, but our eye traces them all back to where they might be coming from. And I see that it's behind my object and that it's bigger than my object. That's how magnifying glass works. You see an, um, an image that's upright, which means it's, it's virtual, but it's bigger. That's why we use this shape lens to magnify things. So if we're between the focal point and the lens in this area here, we see a virtual image. If we go outside of the focal point, we see a real image. If we go outside of the radius of curvature, we see a real image that is smaller. Inside the radius of curvature, everything is magnified. Inside the focal point, everything is virtual. We're going to spend some time in class playing with the thin lens equation to where we can actually predict this. But for now, it's just a matter of drawing these principal rays in order to find out where my image is and if it's bigger or smaller.